All right, let's get started. It is my pleasure to introduce you guys to our afternoon speaker, Ms. Mary Miller, um, who comes to us from Jancoa Janitorial Services out of Cincinnati, Ohio. It is a 46-year-old family-owned company. Um, with 500 full-time employees, Mary has figured out a unique way to solve her people problems, um, and the success has been re resounding. Um, <laughs> Many of you know the story, her story from the best-selling book, The Dream Manager. Along with being a CEO, Mary is also a coach and um, a, a speaker and an author. It is my pleasure to have her here today. Um, my, my favorite thing about Mary is her joyful spirit. She's simply contagious, and is a, it will be an honor to hear from her today. Please welcome Mary. Thank you. Appreciate it. Good afternoon. One of the things that I did not know when Nicole and I talked about my speaking and being the wrap-up keynote for the afternoon, that I would follow a whole workshop about the best way to tell stories. <laughs> How many of you attended a storytelling thing today? All right, no pressure. <laughs> okay, so my, it'll be interesting to see what the feedback is at the end about the storytelling, right? I love the opportunity to tell stories. And people are frequently surprised by my story here and there. And most of the time, they're really surprised at the thought that they can learn something from a janitor. Did that enter your mind? Yeah, it's crazy. But Sarah mentioned some of the titles I have. And like you, we're busy. We have lots of different roles, right? My roles include being a mother, wife, grandmother, mother-in-law, sister-in-law. Yeah, I also, I'm the CEO of Jan Cohen. My son-in-law is our COO. So it creates a lot of interesting conversations. And our daughter is business development. But back when Tony and I first got married in 1991, we both moved into a new role of being married for the third time. This was never on our dream list. Owning a Janet cleaning company was never on our dream list. But having a family and having a great quality of life was on our dream list. Now, many of you, how many of you have had a dream list since you were 18 years old? Have you done a refreshed your dream list of what you want in your life? It's an important thing, but what happened, what I'm finding, the more I talk with groups and move all over the world with these conversations, is the last time people remember dreaming really big about what they wanted in their life was when they were 18 years old or 22, either leaving high school or college, is when people were most excited about their life. And that's kind of sad, but it's not uncommon. So what I've been able to find is how my story really applies to so many others. So in 91, Tony and I got married. I was in sales, and Tony had this cleaning business that he had started when he was 19 years old. And when he was 19, his father died from heart disease. He had to have surgery, and he didn't survive. So Tony left the family business, or left school, he was going to University of Cincinnati, and he started Jan Coa to take care of his mom and three siblings. Not a dream, survival. Around the time that he was going through all this, I ended up not, never knowing each other. I ended up, when I, the year I turned 30, did anybody ever have a really bad day? <laughs> yeah, so, come on, everybody, right? I had a really bad year. The year I turned 30, it felt like all the wheels fell off. Started the year out with Happy New Year, we have to file bankruptcy. I didn't see that one coming. Then I went through my second divorce. So I was, by second quarter, I was a single mom with three kids. And then my company that I'd worked for for 10 and a half years decided to eliminate the division I worked for. So I also lost my job, and the second job that I found. And on Christmas Eve, I got an eviction notice. Everything that could go wrong went wrong. So I had to realize what I wanted to do different. I had to really look at my life differently. And the first thing I had to do was get a job, right? Anybody here have a real job before? 
before you owned, started your own business? That's why you started your own business, right? <laughs> That's typically the way it works. Well, I had to get a real job, and my parents were not thrilled with the way my life was going. And I remember making the phone call when I found a job. Hey, Mom, Dad, I got a job. And they're like, great, we're so excited. When do you start? How much you're making? Where are you working? And I'm like, well, I'm not sure how much I'm making because it's a 100% commission sales job. Ah, yeah, it'll be okay, I promise. So I got a job selling mobile homes. I knew nothing about mobile homes. Had not even been in a mobile home. <laughs> but I found out I'm really good in sales. You know, when you're hungry and you have three kids who are hungry, you become really good in sales. <laughs> it was just the way it went. Well, then it turns out that the guy I was working for knew this guy named Tony Miller. And he introduced us at an event. So a little over a year goes by, and the phone call went like this. Hey, Mom and Dad, I'm getting married. Again? <laughs> yeah, we're going to make it number three. My oldest daughter actually moved in with her biological father at that point. <laughs> he said, I'm not going to stick with this one right now for a while. I'm going to release this. So I knew I was good in sales. Another affirmation happened because when I first met Tony, he was dating a 24-year-old blonde that had no kids. <laughs> and we got married and just celebrated our 27th anniversary. So yeah. For us, the third time was a charm. Now you can tell our story is going exactly the way we dreamt it would be when we were 16 years old. Everything's just aligned perfectly <laughs> by some kind of weird soap opera. But life kept going, and we were in survival mode. And then all of a sudden, I was making good money in sales. The janitorial business was doing pretty good. And then my boss announces he wants me to start working on Sundays. Sundays was our family day. And Tony looked at me and says, you tell him you're just not going to do it. I said, so what, am I, what are we going to do? So we decided for me to leave that business and join the family business. Another call to mom and dad. I'm quitting my job. What? Yeah, I'm going to go to work with Tony. You're going to be a janitor? <laughs> Does he know you can't clean? <laughs> Such positivity from my parents. So in May of 93, we joined forces. We put our energies together. Now, how many of you are really clear that God has a really bizarre sense of humor? Right? Absolutely. Nowhere on earth, we weren't on anybody's list to be most successful at anything. Tony had 65 part-time employees. It's a 24-7 business, and it's insanity. People take cleaning really serious. They don't like it when things disappear out of their office. <laughs> it's crazy. So we start working together, and we're like, we're in this new survival mode because I was making a lot of money, and that, that income stopped. So we had to do something with this business, and we were going to a program called Strategic Coach. Anybody familiar with Strategic Coach? A couple of you? Tony, I've been clients, Tony and I have been going for 27 years, been married 27 years, so every quarter we would pause, go to a workshop that's all about thinking and how you want to spend your time learning from the past and planning for the future. And we, we were in a room with a lot of financial planners. And what we realized pretty soon when we were going to this workshop together is we had no financial plan. <laughs> we had no money. And we had to do something because we had five kids between the two of us and no retirement. We were not getting any younger. So we really start focusing and decided, okay, we're going to make Jancoa our business, the entrepreneurial dream. We're going to make this company worth something that somebody might buy one day. Who would want to buy our business? It was insane. It was, it was a job. We owned a job, a 24-7 job. We had no free time. We had insanity all the time. So we really had to take a look at what we were doing. Went to an industry conference where I found a consultant. His name was Bob. <laughs> and my friend Bob sitting in the front row, who used to be my client. It's just a small world, the way things work. So Bob comes in. The deal was he had five days. Came in on Monday, and we had dinner. 
and we were going to talk about the plan. Monday night, Tony and Bob were going out to scope out the buildings to see what we were going to do and put it into play. On Tuesday, they were coming back to meet with me, and Tuesday night, we were going to start really making this thing work. So Tuesday afternoon, I hadn't talked to Tony because they had been out all night Monday night. I was in the office. Tony and Bob come into my office, and Bob's got a suitcase. I look at his suitcase, and is everything okay? And he looks at Tony. You guys may know this look. Do you ever talk to your wife? <laughs> and he looks back at me, and he says, Mary, there's nothing I can do to help you. You're fired. Have you ever been fired by a consultant? Has anybody here ever been fired by a consultant? One day, you really have? Awesome. <laughs> I feel much better now. <laughs> because I was just in shell shock. I couldn't believe he could get fired. We wrote the check to him. He says the check will be in the mail, the refund. So he left, and we had to finish that week. And on Saturday, we went to every bookstore in Cincinnati to find books on how to find people, how to keep people. And I kept hearing Barbara Streisand singing in my ears, people who need people are the luckiest people in the world. I wasn't feeling so lucky, though. It was a mess. We had to do something. We had 65 people plus our families that depended on us to eat. So we really had to do something. So by Monday morning, we figured out the top things, we start asking different questions. That was the number one thing, is asking different questions. And the number one question is, our best people we have, what do they look like? Because see, what Bob had told us it was, the problem we had isn't that our people were a problem, but we didn't have enough people. That Monday night, Tony and Bob spent the whole night vacuuming. Bob said, I'm probably the most expensive vacuumer you've ever had. And I said, or ever will have, I hope. It was a mess. So we realized one of the things that our top 10 employees had in common was consistent travel transportation issues. We were constantly shuffling and driving people around to get them to different buildings to get the buildings clean by 6 a.m. So Monday morning, again, Tony started our business at 19. He's an entrepreneur, off the cuff, gets an idea, goes and does it. So he goes and buys a 15-passenger van, goes to a sign painting store and has it painted, Jancoa Employee Shuttle, drives it to the office and tells our general manager at the time, I figured out how to fix our problem. And she's sitting at her desk and she crosses her arm and she says, which problem? <laughs> like that was her only one, right? <laughs> and Tony says, our people problem. Look out your window. We're going to pick people up from their home, take them to work, and take them home afterwards. She hadn't uncrossed her arms. She says, and who's going to drive this magic bus? I don't have enough people to clean tonight, let alone driving people around all night. Our people, we had already switched to full time. They were working 6 p.m. to 2.30 a.m. We already were offering health insurance. We already went to full time versus part time. We were doing everything we could think of to attract the great people to work for us. There used to be 104 other cleaning companies. And you know how I know that? There was this book, it was called The Yellow Pages. <laughs> and you can count all your competitors, right? It doesn't exist anymore. So we really started figuring out what we were going to do, and Tony decided he's going to be the driver until we found somebody else. And so for two weeks, Tony was the driver of the shuttle. It took two days for him to become invisible. He wasn't the owner of the business. The employees getting on and off the shuttle just saw somebody was taking them to where they needed to be. And the gift in that was Tony starts seeing where they lived. He started hearing them talking about their obstacles. He would come home at 3, 3.45 in the morning or so, and he has this horrible rule, if I can't sleep, you can't sleep. <laughs> Not a good one. <laughs> And he'd wake me up and tell me about what he saw, about what he heard, and what was going on. And our hearts broke. We were so busy in our own survival of trying to figure out how we were going to take care of our blended family of five kids, how we were going to pay our bills, that we weren't even thinking about our employees. Now, Bob hit the nail on the head. We had a people problem but it was because of the way we were dealing with our people. 
So we start doing things differently. We start going to agencies. You know, in this community, in every community in this country, there's so many agencies that have programs that will help people improve their quality of life. Whether it's through financial literacy, or speaking English, or budgeting, or buying a home. We helped like 30 families buy homes. Many of them were first generation homeowners. Somebody told us, a friend from Atlanta told us one day, you know what you guys are doing is helping people have their dreams come true. So we changed our name. This is really, you guys as entrepreneurs, you'll get this. Our name of our program originally was the Incredible Employee Retention Program. Catchy? Yeah. (laughs) We moved that to the Dream Engineer. So all of a sudden we got this call from a young man that Tony had met when he was on a retreat with a couple other guys named Matthew Kelly. And he said, you know, what you guys are doing is amazing, and I want to write a book. What can we work out? Okay, where do you put on your dream list? Have a best-selling author write a book about a program you create for your employees. You know, it's just one of those things. When you're moving toward something and toward those big dreams, these strategic byproducts come along that you can't predict but they don't happen when you're sitting on the couch feeling bad for yourself, watching bad TV. You have to be in movement, going toward what you want to have in your life. And we've learned a lot during that time frame since Matthew had contacted us and the way our business has grown, because we went, in 93, we had 65 part-time employees. We had no money. You know, some people live payroll to pay, paycheck to paycheck. We were living payroll to payroll, just having enough to cover each payroll and then the tax deposit. We had no plan for the future, and we got fired by a consultant. Whereas today, 25 years later, we have almost 600 full-time employees Not only do we have money in the bank, but we're we're actively involved with philanthropy in our community, and I'm involved in a few boards. We have a plan for our future, but we enjoy what we're doing so much now, we don't ever want to retire. My son-in-law never likes hearing that. He says, how long are you guys going to hang around? (laughs) And I'm being asked to speak and consult all over the world. That's a huge difference. So we've learned some big lessons, and I want to share a few of them with you, because that was our spark. When Bob fired us, you know, spark happens because something happens in your life that moves you to want to do something differently. Our spark spark happened because we were fired by a consultant. You know, it took a really tiny flame to start all these amazing wildfires that can eat up communities. Entrepreneurs' ideas are a little spark that blow into amazing things. But the number one thing you have to know is what do you want? And I don't mean what do you want for lunch, what do you want for dinner, what do you want for your life? And being clear on what that is. So I have some different questions that I want to spark with you all today. When you're looking at what do you want, look at it with a different perspective, a a much bigger picture of what do you want, not just what do you want today. But if it were three years from now, put yourself forward. If it was three years from now, so it's already 2021, and you're looking back over the last three years, what has to happen for you to be really happy with your progress, personal and professional? We are one person with one life. We have to stop compartmentalizing so much that we don't enjoy and see how everything connects. Because we all know when you have a bad day at the office, The home feels it. And when things aren't going well at home, you're not as productive at work. Everything is connected. So start with getting really clear about what you want as if it's already three years from now. And set an appointment with yourself within the next three days. Find a time to sit for 30 minutes at a coffee shop or something and just start writing all the things that come to mind. And don't think about how or what, but just what do you want? We need to start dreaming like we were 18. At 18, you didn't care how much something cost. You didn't critique or analyze if it was possible. You just wrote it down and told people you were going to do it. Now, as entrepreneurs, we always have people looking at us like we have three heads. 
So what's the difference? You just take the time. This is about you. If you don't take care of yourself, nothing else is going to matter because that's the trick. Until Tony and I start taking care of ourselves and seeing things differently, nothing else was going to change. Our spark continued by looking at change and embracing change. To create positive change in others, you must first find the catalyst for positive change in yourself. It starts with you. You truly are the center of your universe. Nobody else will tell you that, but it's true. Because if you were to die tomorrow, your part of the universe is gone. They'll cry, they'll be sad, but you're gone. So why not enjoy the life you have now? Go after and do what you want to do and make it happen. And be willing to embrace change. Because until you're ready to embrace change, nothing's going to happen. Who knows the definition of insanity? Keep doing something the same way, expecting different results. If you want something different, you have to do something different. And it starts with yourself. And why is it important? And I love when... <laughs> When I was talking with Nicole, I said, well, I, think, well, I like being at the end. I can attend some of the sessions and find out if, if there's any intersection and overlap with the conversations, and there's been so much. You know, yesterday they were talking about the why and how important the why is, and I totally agree. Simon Sinek has some great stuff with a TED Talk and a book, Know Your Why, but I found this great video that shows you how you know your why by what you feel. It's not just the logic part, but to connect with your heart. Watch this. It's called, how do I know? And a lot of times when people hear the phrase, how do I know, the next thing they say is what? How do I know what? But the key really isn't to know what, the key is to know why. Because when you know your why, you have options on what your what can be. For instance, my why is to inspire people to walk in purpose. My what is stand-up comedy. My what is writing books. My what can be going out with some friends to eat. In fact, another what that has moved me towards my why is a, a web series that we have out now called Break Time. So every Wednesday at 3 o'clock, you should subscribe to the, to the channel. Uh, we do a series called Break Time on YouTube. So 3 o'clock, we drop a new episode. One episode in particular I'm about to show you a clip to, we were in, uh, we in Winston-Salem. So break time, this is how it works. I travel the country, I do stand-up comedy, probably an hour, hour and a half at an event. And in the middle of my show, I'll just sit down and start talking to the audience. And funny just happens. Or I'll meet somebody who's really interesting. So I met this one guy, and he said that he teaches music at a school. I was like, all right, you teach music, you know, um, can you sing? And then, uh, I'm just going to show you a clip. Check it. So you're a musical director. Cool. Yes, sir. All right, so um, let me get a couple Let me get a couple bars of, like, uh, Amazing Grace. Can you do the first part of that? Go ahead. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved us. Once you give me the version, it's if uh, your uncle just got out of jail, you got shot in the back when you was a kid. I'm just saying, let me see the hood version real quick, if you know the version I'm talking about, just see if that exists. And this is what you got. Doing it. 
when you know your why, your what has more impact because you're walking in or towards your purpose. Purpose. We've heard about purpose this week, too. Your why should drive your passion in your business and personal life. Why do we do anything in life? When I start working with Tony, we were about cleaning toilets and mopping floors. Through the shuttle experience, we start seeing the humanity of people that broke our heart, that we wanted to do something different. If you go to YouTube and Google Jan Koa, a little video will come up that Compassion International did. And we talk about how we've moved into becoming a human development company with the people who don't want to help anybody else to do it. People don't want things done for them. They want to lift up. They want an opportunity to improve their quality of life, including Tony and I. You know, we all need a hand up from time to time. But we can't expect other people to help us if we don't know what we want and why it's important and be willing to embrace change. It makes a difference. And as we go around the spark and see how we do things in our life, our thinking, which I love the model yesterday, where there's a stimulus and it goes through this funnel, there's so many things that affect our thinking. We cannot control what enters our brain and what causes us to come up with different thoughts. But we are 100% in charge of what we do with those thoughts. We have six inches between the ears, six inches, that can ruin us or make us amazing and brilliant. You know, it's very not easy, there's no easy button, but it's simple when you start being aware and start looking and paying attention that you can redirect your thinking. You don't have to feed the negativity. You can choose to do it differently. When you redirect your thinking, amazing things start changing. And then when you change your thoughts, you change the world. And it really does start with your thinking. If we didn't start changing our thinking, if we still stayed focused on toilets and floors, we would be like any other cleaning company. The contracts we get today, the conversations we have, when I meet with CEOs and companies that we do business with, we spend 0% time talking about the cleaning. It's about the people. Our people that want to work for us want to have an opportunity. We had an amazing experience recently. Tony and I went to an outreach training in Cincinnati to do work in prisons. And a young man, there's about 40 people in the room, and a young man at our table said, you guys look really familiar. So we introduced ourselves, and he said, I used to work for you. And I'm like, what? He says, yeah, I'm from Nigeria. And you are, Janko was my first job in the United States. In my country, things were so bad, and I loved my career, though. I was in IT. So working for Jankoa allowed me to have money to pay my bills, to eat, and the time to go to class to get the certifications I need so I could get back into the IT industry. And that's what he's doing now. And he still remains friends with people that he met while working at Jankoa. When we decide to get out of our way and focus on, I mean, we all know we have to create value for, for customers, right? Why would they pay for us if we don't create value for them? Well, where's that scale of justice? We need to be able to take care of our team members, too. Just because you gave them a paycheck, I mean, our customers pay us. They expect more than just the standard. So do our employees. It works both ways. So we're always working on trying to find ways to keep that balance, the scales of balance, to be able to create value for both sides. And our thinking was a big part of making that happen. And what we've realized is that there's five core principles. And principles is something that's not necessarily you apply in your life, but applies to how you do things. And the Dream Manager by Matthew Kelly, written about what we created, this is it's a great program, but it's, what it's done is it's evolved into this culture of caring. And this is a huge part of our culture today. It's not just about a Dream Manager program helping people go after their dreams and making their life bigger and better. It's about really caring about people, about asking what they want and listening, not assuming. And I'm not talking about survey monkeys. 
I'm talking about real connection and conversations with people. And if we're up to 600 people, I can't have that conversation. But I have my managers and middle managers, and they talk to the supervisors. So we train from the top down, because everybody has to be going after their dreams, or it's not going to work. If a CEO, I had a person call me a couple weeks ago in Montana. Yeah, my CEO read this book, and they told me they want me to put this program in place. What do we do? I said, is your CEO working on his dreams? She says, I have no idea. I said, it's not going to work. It's got to start at the top. I think Clay Mateel is probably the biggest dreamer I've ever met. I mean, look at this place and the difference it's making in so many lives. And he didn't wait for somebody to tell him what to do and how to do it. You have to be clear of what's important and be willing to ask, care about people, ask them what they want, listen. The conversation session, or how many went to the conversation session today? It was powerful and so true. Listen, what I tell people is listen with your ears and your heart wide open. Not judgmental, not trying to figure out how to do anything, but just listen. Acknowledge what you heard and encourage people. Our jobs is not to make other people's dreams come true, but to encourage them to go after their dreams by creating an environment of possibility. And we're always doing that in everything we do and every event we do. And treat, creating a sense of community as entrepreneurs. The Aileron's an amazing community of support and encouragement. And I hope you all have that on a regular basis in some part of your home. Maybe it's on a round table. Maybe it's a mastermind group you're part of. But also for your team members, that they have that sense of community. Everybody wants to be part of something. We are drowning in connections, but starving for community. You know, it's so easy to make connections. How many connections do you have on LinkedIn? Huh? My daughter said I'd never make 100 on Facebook. <laughs> I've gone beyond that a few. You know, it, it's crazy, but the sense of real connection and community, that's what feeds our spirit. And our spirits need to be fed regularly. It's an important part of who we are. And nothing changes until you do something different. What we have done different is focus on the needs and the, the dangers of our team members, like helping them with transportation, helping them with homes, helping them with literacy, financial as well as language. There's so many needs, but the number one thing they need is to feel connected, to be able to do things. An ounce of action is worth a ton of theory. And that's one of the things I've loved this week about Aileron. It's not been theory. It's been real information that we can go back and really do something with in our business, right? I mean, we've all been to programs where it was just a bunch of theory, right? And we didn't know what to do when we got back. But we have so many things that we can do with the information we've heard this week. So one of the, some of the things that we've done to help create that sense of community I thought it'd be interesting to share. Last year, we have one year, we have over 200 buildings we clean around greater Cincinnati. So that's 600 employees, that's just in the greater Cincinnati area. And 98% of them are still full time. So once a year, we have an event that we try to bring everybody together and invite them to bring their immediate family. So last year, it was FC Cincinnati game. They t we thought they told us it was a whiteout game. So instead of blue or orange shirts, we all had white shirts with the blue and orange and Jan Koa plastered on the back. It wasn't a white out game, so we were the only ones there with white shirts. <laughs> My phone started blowing up because everybody could really see us. <laughs> What's going on? It was crazy. But look at all those white shirts there in the crowd. Those are all Jan Koa people and their families that were going. And one of our team members' son was actually a ball boy. We do, uh, this year we were at the zoo and we give different door prizes that they could do and we had face painting. We had, uh, this group was at the FC Cincinnati game. They were really into it. FC Cincinnati's done amazing things. We do a back to school bash to help our kids, our employees, kids to get excited about education. Education's what changes things. But we have low income, entry level employees. They don't understand education and people from 40 countries have worked for us. 
So we try to really encourage that, and we give. All these kids are in line to be able to fill these blue bags with free back-to-school supplies. And we brought Kona ice, and we had face paint. We were grilling out. And we had 200 people, kids, get supplies that day. It was crazy. We are involved with Women Helping Women at their event this year. We went. It was a costume for superheroes, and we decided to become the detailed divas. It's one of the ways that we clean. So yeah, I was in the leader right there in the center. And we went and they were like, who are you guys? <laughs> so it's about having fun. We don't have to take ourselves so serious. But you have to do something to get something different. You got to know what you want. Be willing to make change. Know why it's important. Be really clear on your thinking. Have that sense of community and connection to help support you and encourage you when things get a little difficult. Do something different with your action steps. And that all coming together will create passion. I believe everything in me that we're all born with dreams and talents and gifts to achieve that dream, those dreams. And the adventure of life is bringing those pieces together. And as they come together, you can feel passion coming alive. To this day, Tony and I are not passionate about how clean the toilets and floors are. It's a necessity. It's what we get paid for. But we are passionate about making a difference in other people's lives so they can be who they're made to be. And it is an honor and a privilege to be able to share this with other people. So what are you going to do in your life? What is important? What's the spark for you? If you don't love what you do, you won't do it with much conviction or passion. Don't get confused by the task. I'm not a janitor. I am a person. I'm a dreamer. I told my, one of my team members, you've heard of Johnny Appleseed before, you know, throwing seeds and grass. I'm Mary Dreamseed. I'm just throwing those seeds out of possibility and dreams wherever I can to get people excited about what's possible. Get yourself unstuck. Be who you're made to be. And go after those dreams. Tony and I had a real dream come true in May. We got to go to Israel, and we were there for nine days. The one first day, we were in the Sea of Galilee region, it's the north region. They believe in this triangle in the north part of the Sea of Galilee that Jesus probably did 80% of his teaching. And I had posted a picture on social media when we had arrived in this region on the top of a mountain, and my sister messaged me, said, you see that little town on the other side of the mountain? That's Magdala. They just found a synagogue there in 2006, and they're still ex excavating in that area. It would be really cool if you get a chance to go see that. So I checked with our guide the next morning, and she looked at me really funny. She said, I just talked to your leaders to see if we could add that to the agenda, because it wasn't part of the agenda. And we got to go. And it was crazy. As this couple bought this lentil bean field because they were going to make a Hawaiian village on the Sea of Galilee. That's a tourist attraction for you. <laughs> but when they started excavating, what they found just 18 inches under the surface was a synagogue. And not only do they believe that Jesus spoke at the synagogue and taught, but he was there many times. And they're still working on the tile floor, cleaning it up. It was over 2,000 years worth of earthquakes and mudslides that had covered it up. And I felt I have this friend that's always saying to me, so what is God telling you? What's he saying to you? And I heard it really clear that day. What's laying just beneath your surface? What are the seeds of the dreams and the talents and the gifts that I've planted in each of you? that you don't even know it's there yet because you're so busy being busy. You're so busy seeing what other people are doing and thinking, well, that's really cool, I should do that. Instead of looking in the mirror and saying, what do I love to do? What was I made to do? That's how passion gets ignited, by doing what you're made to do, not by doing what somebody else do that looks really cool. And it makes a world of difference. But you have to start with yourself. The Dream Manager is a great program, but creating a culture of caring and starting with caring with yourself. How much self-care, another topic that came up this week, how much self-care do you really do? 
in all aspects of your life because passion doesn't come alive until you do that. And it takes just a small flame, a mighty flame to follow with a tiny spark to create change in your life. Don't wait to be fired by a consultant like we were to <laughs> be sparked into doing something different. Be clear about what you want and go after it and determine what it is you're made to do to be able to go after. When you spark change, it moves you toward that passion. And when you create a culture of caring, it is amazing how people are attracted to you. I think this is an amazing week to recalibrate that magnet inside of each one of us and what we attract into our lives. And if we're not attracting, often we're repelling and people don't want to be around us. And that's one of the things you start attracting, things that you can never dream of doing, like a best-selling author writing a book about something you created out of desperation. I was at a conference once, and I got an email asking if I'd come to Dubai to speak, and I laughed. I said to my assistant, check this out and see if it's real. It was. We went to Dubai. We rode camels. <laughs> it was quite an interesting experience. But you have to start with yourself. Know your score. On page 86 in your book, there's a scorecard with eight mindsets and a scale of 1 to 12, where you could take the time to determine where are you today, where do you want to be in these eight different mindsets? Because it starts with our thinking. And the number one place you have to start is be willing to do things differently. And when you do, you will see a difference in your life. It will make a difference. When you let your own light shine, you unconsciously give the permission for others to do the same. You all have a light within you. You all have dreams and gifts and talents to make these things happen in your life. So what do you have to start doing to make that happen, to get you really excited? So if we were meeting here three years from today, in 2021, what has to have happened for you to be happy with your progress and achieving your big dreams? Thank you very much.